This trick is gonna make you go from a noob to pro in PvP. And these are some weapons that you might be using wrong. These are 10 things that you're doing wrong in Blocks Fruits. This is something that you guys are definitely doing wrong in the game. I'm talking about guns. And some of you might be wondering, how is it possible to be using guns wrong? Well, if you're a new player to the game, you might not know this. The only real purpose in the game that guns serve is to break observation. Which means that they're only useful for PvP. And I see a lot of new players using guns to grind. First of all, a thing that's bad about it is that guns only have two special abilities. Meanwhile, things like swords and fruits have way more. Make sure the only thing you're using it for is PvP and not grinding under any circumstances because that's going to slow down your progress of the game by a lot. Okay, so this is something that I see a lot of new players making a mistake of and I certainly did when I first started off. I'm talking about stats. You'll notice every time you level up, you actually get three stat points that you can upgrade whatever you want with. You can choose from different things such as your melee, defense, sword, fruit, and gun. And what a lot of new players do is that they upgrade these things evenly, and this is something that you should definitely not be doing in the game. What I recommend for you guys to do is pick three things, and make sure that you definitely choose melee and defense. And the third one, in my opinion, should be either sword or blocks fruit, depending on what type of way you want to play the game. The melee stat points not only upgrade your combat style, but they actually give you extra energy, so it's basically two birds with one stone. And the defense stat is something that you're definitely going to need if you want to level up in the game, because it increases the amount of health you have. And once you get onto harder opponents in the second and third seed, if you don't have a good amount of health, you're going to struggle a lot with grinding. And even with pvp so make sure you put your third stat points on either your sword or your fruit because those are the main things that you're going to be using in your grinding process for the game okay so this is a mistake that i still see a lot of second and third c players making it's the way you grind your hockey it's an ability that you buy from the abilities teacher and it increases your defense and offense stats making it a really good ability and you can even change the color of it and the mistake i see people making is that some people actually grind their hockey with their blocks fruit so for example, if some people have the light or ice fruit and they choose to grind their hockey with the sword passive ability. But the really bad thing about this is even if you have your hockey turned on and you're grinding with the fruit, you will not get any points towards your hockey. Which is kind of weird addition to blocks fruits if you ask me. But nevertheless, make sure you're using a sword or a combat style. So there's actually a really good way to completely max out your hockey overnight. And the way you do this is you equip a really bad sword. I recommend the katana because it's literally the worst sword in the game. And then all you have to do is equip an elemental fruit, which means the enemies without hockey won't be able to hit you. And then you can go to any enemy on the map that does not possess hockey and then you can stand on their spawn point and leave an auto clicker with your sword on. And the reason you want to use a bad sword is the way your hockey upgrades actually goes based on how many times you hit the enemy, not the amount of damage you do. And then if you leave this auto clicker overnight, you should get max hockey in literally one night. Pretty cool trick if you ask me. Okay, so this is a mistake I see a lot of raid farmers making. What I mean by this is not using the correct fruits or ways to grind raids to make your efficiency 10 times better. So starting off, you definitely want to be using the butter fruit to grind your raids with because it's literally the best fruit for grinding and to use for raids. And the reason for this is that the range that you can hit people with the Buddha actually increases by a lot when you transform. Which means you can do damage to your enemies without them being able to do damage to you. So when you're clearing out your raids and you get to low health with the Buddha fruit, you can literally just walk onto the water and stand still. And the enemies won't be able to reach you. Which means if you play correctly, you basically have infinite health during your raids. Since the Buddha has a 50% damage reduction, which means even if you have low defense points, you can complete a raid no problem. And also, if you're grinding raids just for Fragments, make sure you're not doing any raid other than the flame raid and each raid gives you the exact same amount of fragments So just make sure you're doing the easiest one Okay, so this is a mistake that I see almost everybody doing it's trading wrong There's actually two different ways to trade in blocks fruits way number one is just hopping into your local blocks fruit server And just spamming the chat asking if anybody can trade a fruit instead of doing that What I recommend you guys do is actually join some blocks fruits trading discord servers And this is so much easier because you can just go into the trading chat and literally just type the fruits You're offering and what you want in return and then you just simply wait for your DM And once you get one you can just hop into game with the person and just trade the fruit much easier than server hopping several amount of times just to get that one trade that you want okay so now i'm gonna be telling you guys the best way to grind xp in this game if you're not using the buddha fruit it means you're grinding the game completely wrong the buddha fruit is literally the best grinding fruit you can ask for because you can hit people without them being able to hit you which means you can put most of your stat points into your melee and you don't even need to put that much into your defense and this helps you kill your enemies much faster 
Okay, so everybody knows that there's countless ways to grind blocks fruits. You can do the factory raid, defend the castle on the sea, do a bunch of ship raids, picking up fruits that spawn, and buying them from the blocks fruit dealer or blocks fruit gacha. But I see a lot of people doing it incorrectly. People just running around the map and trying to find fruits that are just lying down on the floor. And I also see a lot of people trying to grind ship raids for them. But doing ship raids is actually a huge mistake if you want to grind fruit. You have a really low chance of getting fruits from a ship raid. And walking around picking up fruits if you don't have the game pass is extremely difficult because you have to go around the whole sea and check every single island. But if you have a blocks fruit radar, that's definitely the best way to grind. But I don't think a lot of you have a bunch of spare robux to spend on that. So you might be wondering, what is the exact best way to grind fruits in the game well it's something that a bunch of you might know the blocks fruit gotcha the blocks fruit gotcha gives you a random fruit every time you roll and depending on what level you have you have to pay a different amount to roll a fruit you can buy a fruit from him every three hours and if you create a bunch of new roblox accounts and grind them up to a high enough level to buy from him that three hour cooldown gets way lower depending on how many accounts you have so if you want to grind fruits this is definitely the best way Okay, so this is one of the most crucial elements to Blocks Fruits, and I still see a lot of people doing it wrong. I'm talking about PvP. And some of you might be thinking, PvP is just randomly spamming your abilities and just hoping you kill your opponent. But there's actually a lot of unseen tactics that goes into it. One of the most important things towards PvP is observation. Your observation hockey literally defends you from multiple attacks. But there's actually some abilities that break observation. And this is what you're gonna want to get your hands on if you want to be good at PvP. And next up, you actually want to learn a bunch of combos. It would be too long to list every combo here, but if you're interested in learning some combos, just search them up on Google. And there's also a second element that goes into PvP. I'm talking about your movement. A lot of you might have fruits that actually have movement abilities, and this is something you definitely want to abuse in PvP. If you move around really fast, your opponent will have a really hard time being able to hit you, unless they have super pro aim. Dashing can be the literal difference between winning or losing a PvP fight. As well as sky jumps. Sky jumps as well are really important. If you combine dashes and sky jumps, it's really hard for your opponent to hit you. But keep in mind, if you're moving around using sky jump and dash, it's also going to be pretty difficult for you to hit your opponent. So I guess PvP comes down to whoever's aim is better. And on the topic of aim, make sure you choose the right sensitivity. It can be the difference between you winning a PvP fight or losing one. Okay, so next up we got sea beast hunting. And sea beast hunting is something that I mentioned a lot in my previous videos, but I never actually told you guys the best way to do it. And to this day, I still see a lot of people hunting sea beasts the wrong way. And sea beasts are actually super overpowered mini bosses. So if you don't have the right equipment to fight one, then you're probably going to be dying. And you might be wondering, what is the best way to fight a sea beast? Well, it actually depends on what type of player you are and the way you want to take down the sea beast. But what I recommend is Shark V4 combined with the Awakened Magma. And the reason for this is that when you use the abilities of Awakened Magma, there's actually a puddle that stays behind for a while, dealing a bunch of damage to players and NPCs that stand in it. If you shoot it at its core, you're going to be dealing constant damage to the Sea Beast. And the reason you want Shark V4 is obviously because you're always surrounded by water. And it's probably the most overpowered race for water combat. Another upside to Sea Beast hunting is that it's one of the best ways to farm money in the game. So now you know the best way to grind some Sea Beast and some money at the same time.